G'day, I'm Andrew Bucklow from news.com.au. Now, the US election is coming up on November 3rd. It is a massive event. Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. It's going to have repercussions for the whole world. But the US electoral system is a bit of a confusing one. So I'm joined by news.com.au's political reporter, Sam Clench, to explain how it works. And Sam, it's not just a case of whoever gets the most votes wins. No, it's absolutely not. You'll remember that four years ago, Hillary Clinton actually won 2.9 million more votes than Donald Trump, and she lost the election. He became president. That's the way their system works. The popular vote does not matter. It's all about winning electoral votes. Right. What the heck is an electoral vote, <laughs> you might be wondering. What the hell is that all about? Every state, based on its population, gets a certain number of electoral votes. Whoever wins the popular vote in that state wins all of that state's electoral votes. Right, OK, so basically if Trump wins California, he gets one vote basically for winning that state and that carries a certain number of votes and then a smaller state will carry a less number of votes. Yeah, so for example Vermont, very small state, not many people live there, three electoral votes. California, which Trump is absolutely not going to win by the way, <laughs> California is 55 because it's the most populous state in the US. What you're trying to build towards is 270. That's the number you need to win the election. But this is a battle for the soul of America. Who are we? The election is coming up on November 3rd in the US, but how quick are we going to know the results here in Australia? Well, it could take quite some time. There's a little thing going on right now called the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> I've heard I don't of it. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but that is going to complicate matters, right? There's going to be a lot more mail ballots than usual, and mail ballots take longer to count, right, which okay. is a problem when you're trying to count mm, more than 100 million of them. We might be counting for days afterwards, and that would lead to quite an interesting situation. I don't like this mail-in ballot deal. They're going to send out 51 million mail-in ballots to people that haven't requested them. Well, where are they going? Trump has been laying the groundwork to question the results, you could say. He's been speaking for months and months now about how he does not trust mail voting. He thinks widespread mail votes will lead to voter fraud. There's not a heck of a lot of evidence to back up that claim. Now, whether he merely whinges about it and still agrees to leave office, that's probably the most likely scenario. Whether he tries to hang on to power anyway, I mean, that would be unprecedented. I want to see the results of the election on November 3rd. What? And by the way, if it's anything like these other events, it could go on forever. Can we trust the results of this election? You know, this is usually something that we talk about in countries run by dictators and stuff like that, rigged elections, but can we trust it here in the US? We can trust it unless evidence shows up to suggest that any of the votes were fraudulent. All the evidence, and it's been studied quite comprehensively, is that voter fraud is incredibly rare, and that includes mail voting. And I think it's all designed to create so much chaos that no matter what the outcome of the election is, that it's thrown up in the air. Well, the election is coming up on November 3. Sam, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who is going to be the next president of the United States? Is it going to be Joe Biden or is Trump going to hold on? Yeah, it's going to be one of those two scenarios. Definitely. Okay. There you go. Sitting on the fence. I like it. Like a good political reporter should do. You can follow <laughs> Sam's coverage and all our coverage of the US election online at news.com.au. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. <laughs>